It is summer in the Northern Hemisphere. That means beach parties and bocce ball for most people, but for me, it means war. I must don my gooey armor of sunscreen and once again do battle with my mortal enemy, the sun. The sun always wins eventually, but my pasty white skin puts up a valiant fight before I must retreat into the shadowy apartment from whence I came. I may be no match for its nuclear fire, but when it comes down to it, our sun isn't particularly noteworthy. It's not the biggest star in the galaxy, nor is it going to become something cool like a black hole someday. It's just a middle-aged yellow dwarf star of average size, inhabiting a part of the galaxy of no real significance. It's downright boring in the grand scheme of celestial objects, but it's the only star we've got. It wasn't always that way though. Billions of years ago, the sun had a twin, and it's still out there somewhere. And it might be trying to kill all of us, not just my pasty white skin. This is a giant molecular cloud. It's full of gas, dust, and baby stars. Our sun formed in one very similar to it about 4.6 billion years ago. Compressed by the shock waves of a nearby supernova, a volume of hydrogen gas collapsed onto itself. The cloud became so dense and hot, the gravitational pressure inside of it overcame the electrostatic repulsive force between protons. This crushed the hydrogen atoms together and initiated nuclear fusion. This was how our sun was born, in a thermonuclear detonation. But it wasn't the only explosion that day. Not too far away, another star ignited as well. This was the sun's twin. Not identical, but conceived of the same dust and gas, under the same conditions, in the same giant molecular cloud. If we look at the sky, most of the stars we can see aren't alone. They have companions. The majority of solar systems have multiple stars within them. For a long time, we wondered whether these multi-star systems started out as singletons, like our solar system, and over time became captured or entangled in each other's gravity, creating the multi-star systems we see today. Or maybe they were born that way. Now, computer-generated models of the physics going on in these giant molecular clouds during the formation of stars like our sun seem to point to the latter. Because of the shape of these stellar birthplaces, two cores are created when the cloud undergoes collapse. This would suggest that all stars are born with a twin, even our sun. But the idea that our sun had a twin isn't new. In the 1980s, scientists began to notice a pattern in Earth's history. About every 26 million years, a significant reduction in biodiversity could be observed in the fossil record. These mass extinction events seem to occur on a schedule, as if whatever was causing them was cyclical. A distant star, too dim to be observed by the naked eye, on a 26 million year orbit around our sun, could theoretically come close enough to the solar system and disturb the orbits of the comets in the Oort cloud or Kuiper belt. These comets would then rain down on the inner solar system, impacting the Earth and causing mass extinctions. The hypothetical star was called Nemesis, named for the Greek goddess of retribution. Nemesis has been variously postulated to be a small dim star, or the remnants of a star that has exhausted all its nuclear fuel, or even a rogue planet larger than Jupiter. Whatever it is, if it is the sun's twin, it is an evil twin. But all attempts to spot the culprit have failed. Further investigation into the fossil record has cast doubt on the regularity of mass extinctions, and any plausible orbits of an unseen star that could wreak havoc on the solar system would be inherently unstable. You can't have cyclical extinction events if your nemesis star can't stick around long enough to cause them. Despite the lack of evidence, Nemesis still pops up in the news from time to time, heralding dramatic climate shifts, asteroid impacts, and other typical signs of the apocalypse. But even if Nemesis doesn't exist, the sun's real twin is in all likelihood still out there somewhere, but very far away. According to the most recent models on stellar development, our sun and its twin would have only spent a few million years together before slowly drifting apart. Now the sun's twin could be thousands of light years away. Conceivably, we could find it by searching for stars that are the same age as our sun, with the same spectral features, 
but there'd be no way to know if any particular candidate star was actually our son's twin. So the son's long lost twin will most likely remain long lost. The real tragedy here might not be that the sun has an evil twin lurking in the outer edges of the solar system, bringing death and destruction, but that it doesn't. Our star, despite having so much in common with so many other stars in our galaxy, is most likely alone, has been for much of its existence, and will in all likelihood stay that way until it exhausts its nuclear fuel and dies. But that's also what makes it unique. If events had progressed differently, and the sun and its twin had stayed together, our solar system would be a very different place. The planets as we know them would most likely not exist. Even if life had managed to find a foothold, humans definitely would not be here. At least I wouldn't. My pasty white skin can barely handle one sun. Obviously, the sun is a big ball of hydrogen and helium. It can't feel lonely. But I can rest assured, in the dark confines of my apartment, that the sun will seize another glorious victory, dimmed by an unbroken and remarkable solitude. Hey, special thanks to our Patreon supporters. Uh, without Patreon, uh, this show just wouldn't happen. So if you like what we do here, uh, why don't you think about going over to Patreon and uh, checking it out, maybe becoming a supporter or something. We've got a lot of cool stuff you can get. There's a live stream you can attend, there's a podcast, and you get to see every one of these episodes before anybody else. So if you like the good stuff and you want it to continue, go over to Patreon and become a supporter. And thanks for watching. Also sharing these videos and tweeting about them or Facebooking about them or whatever, that helps too. 